Hello, this is Caleb with God's Loving Sacrifice Podcast, where we talk about the Word of God and how it helps us get through today's world. I hope you learn and grow as you listen. Today, first I want to thank all of you for your prayers, and for all the pain and suffering that I had gone through, and God is just so good. I did have the surgery, and I woke up from the surgery, except for the pain of the surgery, I was pain-free. And first time in three months. I've still got eight weeks to go to get through the surgery. No bending and picking up things and all the things that go with that. But I thank you all for your prayers and your concerns and your love that you sent my way. Today, we want to talk about Uh, What's the results of the overspray of our actions as Christians? And you know, it's like I said, God is good and he's faithful. And he can sometimes, when we get ourselves in a certain position, say, that's what you're going to talk about. Today, my cousin left that had spent a week with me, helping to take care of me, and we talked a lot about God, and we got some good prayers and studies and talks in, and I'm just was so full of God, and till the lady that comes down the street every day with her black dog that comes into my yard and does its thing, and she just lets it run and round, and I keep thinking, why are you letting your dog in my yard? I don't bring my dog to your house to go in your yard. So I had decided I would go out and ask her, please don't bring your dog into my yard. She proceeded to tell me how rude I was, and that I should just go back in my house, and her dog wasn't hurting anything, and if he did anything, she would pick it up. I said, that's not the point. You know, it's my yard and I don't want your dog in my yard. I spray my weeds. I don't know that your dog might be allergic to that stuff and you're letting them drape around in it. Lindis to say she got hateful with me and instead of me being gentle and kind and understanding and doing all the things that God would expect me to do, I screamed at her. (laughs) I screamed at her. And I told her to keep her dog out of my yard. And that that's bottom line, keep her dog out of my yard. And I went back in the house. And guess what question hit me in the face? What are the results of the overspray of our actions as Christians? How many of my neighbors, who I tell them about God all the time, heard me out there screaming at this old woman and her dog? Not that I'm not an old woman, but, you know. Well, what had made me think about the overspray was that I did spray. I didn't spray the weeds. My wonderful cousin that came to stay with me to help me out this week sprayed my weeds. And as it is, you know, the wind will blow and it'll blow a little bit of the spray. And I noticed there was a few places in the edges of my yard where that kind of blew in there and it had killed a little bit of the grass. No big deal. But I thought that's us. When we just kind of put it out there. What does our overspray do? I had thought about that well before the incident with the lady. Then the incident with the lady happened, and it was kind of like God said, you just got a good illustration for your thoughts. What did you, was the results of the overspray of your actions? Does that woman, who I did not know, uh, does that woman think you're a Christian? Does anybody that heard that conversation me? Yelling at her and even using one cuss word at her, think I'm a Christian. And that's very important to me. There's a song called Legacy, and I love this song. The chorus of this song is like my mantra. I want to be a legacy. How will they remember me? Did I choose to love? Did I point to you enough to make a mark on things? I want to be an offering, a child of mercy and grace who blessed your name unapologetically and leave that kind of legacy. Didn't leave that kind of legacy tonight. 
So here I am telling you about my big boo-boo. And I went out and was looking at what God expects from us. The Beatitudes has a lot of explanation of that, and it's a good place to look. Matthew 5.13 says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how should it be seasoned? Then it is good for nothing to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. I probably wasn't the example of being the salt of the earth tonight. And I'm not beating myself up. I'm telling you that I make mistakes just like everyone else makes mistakes. I'm just as human as the next person. I've already talked to God about this. I'm already forgiven. The blood's covered me. It's thrown as far as it is the east from the west. But I want you to see by an example of the things that we do do sometimes that we don't think before we do and we don't think before we open our mouths. We let our flesh get ahead of our spirit. And then he said in Matthew 5, 16, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And while I'm saying these scriptures, you know, to my mind, I'm going back, okay, well, that didn't happen either tonight. So, let's look at something else. Matthew 5, 43 through 48 says, You have heard it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who cursed you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. If you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even tax collectors do that? Therefore, you shall be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. That looks like I'm batting a big zero on those three scriptures. But it's not that what I did tonight was wrong. If I see the lady again, I will go to her. I apologize. If we have ought against our brother, that's what we're supposed to do. I don't know if she's a brother or a sister. I don't know if she's a Christian. From the way she spoke to me, I couldn't tell either way. So, um, But that does not justify what I did. The next scripture is Proverbs 3, 27. Do not withhold good from those who it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do so. If you have the ability to do good for someone and you go, oh, no, I'll wait until tomorrow to do it or next week or maybe I really can't do that right now. Um that's not what God expects from us. God says we should be generous and do good. Galatians 6, 6 through 10 says, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that's how he also reap. For he who sows his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows the Spirit will of the Spirit reap reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season ye shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity to do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. Well, you know, I'm talking about all this doing good. And we should do good, and people should see us doing good. But there's a difference in doing good and being a Pharisee. God is telling us to do these things because it's what he expects of us. But he also says things like, don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing, and that we shouldn't stand on the corner and pray out in public so 
we get our reward there and not in heaven. We should go into our quiet place and shut the door and pray to God there. That we should do good by not big, big gestures. I was reading an article called, What Does the Bible Say About Making a Difference? A Fresh Perspective. It was written March 11th, 2024 by Adam Phillips. It's from thewitness.org. And what he talks about in doing good was, doesn't the Bible often talk about humility? Absolutely. But here's the catch. Making a difference doesn't always mean being in the spotlight or doing grand gestures. Sometimes it's those small acts of kindness or stepping forward when others step back. So what are the results of your overspray today? Maybe that should be one of our daily reviews of our lives. Did my overspray leave a mark? Did I point to Christ in that? What's the results of the cross? Think of the overspray of Christ dying on the cross. That overspray reaches to the ends of the earth. It saves to the ends of the earth. Every sin that a believer has ever committed is washed away. I heard a minister this morning, and it was talking about when we go to heaven, a lot of people think that we're going to be judged uh, for the sins that we did while we were here on earth. But how can they judge us for those when God says there's no condemnation for those who love him? We've already been judged. We were judged on the cross. If you want to know the pastor's name, I don't remember it right now, but I will leave it in some notes somewhere or tell you in another podcast. But what is our overspray? What is your overspray? Are you gracious? Are you kind? Are you understanding? Do you help others when they need help? Do we remember the brethren? This has been such, this whole thing that I've gone through the first part of this year has been such a wonderful experience. Though painful, but wonderful. I have learned to depend on God even more than I ever did. I have had God show me how he can reunite me with a member of my family that we've always been close, but distant. She lives one place, I live another, and we talk every once in a while. We pray for each other all the time. But one day, when she found out I was having surgery, she says, when do you need me down there? I didn't expect her to come down. And I said, well, my granddaughter's staying with me for the weekend. She said, I'll be there Monday. And she took care of everything for me while she was here. She got things done that I'd been wanting to do for the last three months. And in the future, hopefully, we are going, I am going to have a podcast and my cousin will be in it. And you'll get to hear from my cousin what God has done in her life and her family's life. But remember, when we're out, what others see is our overspray. Is your overspray going to lead someone to Christ? Is your overspray going to add another soul in eternity? Or is your overspray going to turn someone away? Be careful. Be careful where your overspray goes. Let your overspray glorify God in heaven. I pray that you enjoyed today's episode. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave a message by contacting me on the website at www.godslovingsacrifice.com. And while you're there, you can catch up on all the other episodes, check out the reviews, and even read the blog. You can also leave a comment on Facebook at God's Loving Sacrifice. Thank you for spending time with us today. And until next time, may God richly bless and keep you.